I met a man the other day. He said he lived the cowboy way, he dressed in Levi's, boots and hat. He looked authentic where he sat. He'd stuffed his cheek with spearmint shoes, the very kind that cowboys use. And he was scratching here and there as if bugs was in his underwear. <laughs> but then I caught him. He was fake. Another slicker on the make. It wasn't nothing that he said. His hat set backwards on his head. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> you know, I called that one up there, didn't I? Well, I tell you things here. It's been another year here in, in Genoa, and we've had we've had some newsmaker activities. So we've. Uh, Almost lost our uh, our streaker. Uh, he was going to retire, but we talked him into sticking it out for another year. <laughs> and the human cannonball quit. We're looking for another man of his caliber. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, times are hard. Uh, people ask me, how do you get into this poetry business? And uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, I started out on a dude ranch, Honeywell Ranch down in Bridgeport, and uh, way back many years ago, I worked there for a couple of summers, and uh, I have to tell you, dealing with, with guests, they're not dudes anymore, they're guests. <laughs> they pay through the nose, but they still call them guests. <laughs> These people come out from Boston, New York, they don't know anything, never been on a horse. They don't know anything about horses. They can't tell one horse from another, and that kind of inspired this little verse. Folks often ask the question, just what is it that you do when a dude horse gets to bucking and it dumps a guest or two? Well, replied the wrangler, when a dude horse gains such fame, we still keep him in the dude string but we make sure to change his name. <laughs> All right, you ready, Kenny? <laughs> We're having them across the road here today. They're often uh, part of what goes on at Cowboy and Poetry Gathers. And uh, this is a true story based on what happened at one of the recent Elko meetings. Uh, as I say, is true, uh, just except for the parts of that made up. Uh, <laughs> now, it happened after open mic. This guy comes up all businesslike. I was done and feeling proud when he speaks to me from out the crowd. You recited not enough. I gotta say, I like your stuff. Well, I thought right then that I'd arrived, achieved the heights for which I'd strived. An old time, time waddy, gray and rough, tells me that he likes my stuff. And what I'd called my repertoire, I renamed stuff within the hour. And stuff it was, it beats and such. I'd speak in tones both low and, low and gruff, and say, why, sure, I brought some stuff. Until one day, the moment come and I had to pay for what I'd done. Again, it was after open mic. I heard some verse I really liked, done by this trim and pretty gal who said she was a cowboy's pal. She had her Levi's painted on, and displayed a bit of bright red thong, wore a bodice pink and tight, cowgirl hat, lipstick bright. You didn't have to be astute to she, tell she figured she was cute. Well, I went up and spoke to her, ma'am. I ain't no connoisseur. I'm speaking strictly off the cuff. I gotta say, I like your stuff. <laughs> well, she gave me this peculiar look and hit me with her pocketbook. In an uppercut I never saw caught me flush upon the jaw. The knee was headed for my groin when their old man come up to join. And that's the point I bid farewell to that rhyming mademoiselle. Now, I still do a verse or two, but folks, I'm here warning you. Watch your step, use some care, addressing cowgirl poets fair. Unless you will like your parties rough, 
Don't ever say you like their stuff. <laughs> Thank you.